Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So uh, we've already seen the bezel function of order zero. We've seen this and we've done it. Now we're going to look at the bezel function of order one. So uh, so find the domain for this function. Find the domain for this function. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use the ratio test. So when it comes to the ratio test, we always need to compute this value here. We always need to get AM plus 1, that's this AM plus 1, divided by AM. Well, dividing by AM is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of AM. So that would be this. So now, um, now tidy this up. Um, if you, uh, if you look at this, if you look at this, um, if you look at this block and this block, if you merge these two blocks together, you're, you're either going to get negative 1 or 1. And then when you take the absolute, when you take the absolute of negative 1 or 1, it will still be 1. So immediately when you see this, you can just immediately discard this block and discard this block. So this whole thing here will then become this. So now, uh, now if you look at this, um, you should have a hunch that this, if you manipulate, if you manipulate it correctly, this will somehow cancel out with this. Um, so, so looking at this, uh, looking at this, imagine, imagine this as being, as being, as being one bubble adding another bubble. So, so imagine this as being one bubble adding another bubble. So now, uh, now you, uh, you, you can, you can, you can visualize this as being, hang on, you can visualize this. Hang on, bear with me. So here you've got one bubble plus another bubble. So visualize this thing here as being one block multiplying another block. Now you can see that this block is now exactly the same as this block. So these two will cancel out, uh, leaving you with this. Leaving you with this. Now just uh, now you've got one fraction multiplying another fraction. So let's let's just tidy things up. Let's just merge these two together. That will then give you this. That would then give you this whole thing here. So now looking at this, um, uh, hang on. Now looking at this, you should have a hunch that um, that if you manipulate it correctly, uh, this will later somehow. If you manipulate it correctly, will cancel out with this. If you can manipulate it correctly, this will somehow cancel out with this, and then this will somehow cancel out with this. So uh, so looking looking at this, looking at this, imagine this as being one block multiplying another block. So now now you can see later on this will cancel out with this. Um, and then imagine this imagine this as being uh, one block m, m plus 2 and then times m plus 1 factorial. And then, uh, and then imagine this as being uh, one block here multiplying another block. So now, uh, now this block will cancel out with this one here, so these two will cancel out, uh, and then this block here will cancel out with this one here, so these two will cancel out, and then uh, and then this block here will cancel out with this block here, so these two will cancel out, leaving you with x squared four uh, hang on, and leaving you with leaving you with x squared, that's this x squared here, the four here, the four here, m plus one, m plus one. And then you've got your m plus 2, m plus 2. Well, think about it. From here, that will then take you to here. So now you, uh, you, would, break, you would break the two apart. So, uh, so this whole thing here will then become this. That's the same as absolute of 1. But then, but then when you take the absolute of this, and then take the absolute of this, you should realize that n is always positive. n is moving from, from uh, 0 to infinity. n is always positive. So, so it's pointless taking the absolute because it will always be positive. And same with this. x squared and then you take the absolute. x squared will always be positive. So this whole thing here will then become this. So, um, so going back to the very start, we're trying to find a domain for, for, this, uh, for this function here. So, um, so we would use a ratio test. When, when you compute this value here, it then gives you this. For convergence, we require this to be less than 1. Remember, if it's greater than 1, it's going to diverge. If it equals 1, it's inconclusive. Um, so, uh, so, hang on. So, so we, re well, we, we, we require this to, uh, to be less than 1 for convergence. But then if, if you look at this, what, remember, this thing here is exactly the same as this. 
for convergence we require this to be less than 1 but then if you look at this no matter what values of x you put into here it will always converge because as n tends to infinity the, uh, this, the denominator is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so no matter what you put into the x it will always converge so so x the x can be anything on the real number line and, it, and, and the function will converge because this thing here will always be less than 1 regardless of what we put into this x so you can put anything into the x it will it will converge to uh, to zero the limit here will will, um, will be zero therefore the, uh, the, the 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 whole function will will converge so the domain here is anything on the real number line